Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in the study of uh, Eastern Express in Lublin. This is the second event uh, accompanying the uh, Cross-Border uh, con uh, Cooperation Congress. Our meeting tonight is a module, uh, has two modules. In the first module, we will, we will present mat film material in which you can hear voices of artists uh, and writers from uh, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine. We will talk about the activities of uh, Lublin-based uh, Warsztaty Kultury, uh, uh, workshops of culture. Then uh, we will connect with our uh, colleagues uh, in uh, Belarus, with uh, uh, Alhirt uh, Baharevich and uh, Yulia Simoeva. And we also have guests, uh, Tomasz uh, Stempniewski and uh, Professor Hubert Waszkiewicz, and we'll talk about the situation in Belarus. So put some order uh, to uh, to put some agenda to our meeting. Uh, we will round up the uh, uh, round up with a discussion. So you have to uh, register for in a chat um, in a chat um, uh, facility. Uh, we are uh, very eager to listen to hear your comments and your uh, uh, questions to the uh, to our talk. Now, let me ask for uh, to, 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 uh, to, uh, to express uh, opening words by uh, Mr. Director Grzegorz Zapetsky. Could you please uh, uh, sh uh, outline the specificity of uh, of Warsztaty Kultury to uh, people around the world? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, workshops of Culture Warsztaty Kultury uh, have the same name as uh, our uh, publishing house. Uh, the publishing house is the main protagonist of our meeting today. And uh, the publishing house is responsible for uh, Wschodni Express, the Eastern Express uh, 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 series. And the, the publishing house was launched uh, as an individual independent uh, institution in 2012. And Warsztaty uh, Kultury uh, as a part of some other institution had started uh, four years before. So, you know, it's a complicated uh, history and complicated roots, but this is what it looks like. Generally speaking, one of the major objectives that are pursued in uh, uh, workshops of uh, culture is what what is it called uh, is something that calls is active culture that's uh, maybe how to define it it's a communal or collaborative co uh, action with participants of our projects and building projects designing and building constructing projects that are realized with the idea of a long term uh, impact cultural impact we are the best recognizable uh, a festival uh, dedicated to the uh, to uh, the citizens of Lublin, uh, the Night of Culture, the uh, Carnival of uh, 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 Craftspeople, uh, uh, and uh, all these festivals are of different kind, are constructed in a different way. And I believe so far we have been able to satisfy the needs and uh, to and I believe that those um, festivals are developing and they have a team uh, they we could say there is a team uh, the audience makes a a particular group of people that uh, are eager to participate and uh, uh, be addressed with the festival. Apart from that, we have a number of projects, uh, animation-related projects addressed to city uh, citizens of the city. Um, being located in Lublin, we certainly cannot ignore the, co the, the need of cooperating with a lot of institutions and, organi and non-government organizations and the um, cultural media is cultural centers in Ukraine, Belarus, Lithuania, uh, Latvia, Slovakia, and other neighbor states of Poland. In 2014, 
Basically, at the turn of uh, 2014, we had a breakthrough. There was an Euromaidan in Kiev going on, taking place. A date that was also crucial for, for Ukraine. <coughs> and this is when the, our publishing house came into being, and we published as a publishing house a, a, a poem by a poet who is a, yeah, who is no longer among us, uh, and the barricades on the cross. And if there is anyone interested in, uh, in, in the members of the audience of our meeting today, please visit our website, uh, Workshops Warsztaty Kultury PL, where there's far more information and details on our uh, initiatives and our publishing initiatives. And you can find a lot of contacts of all our staff members. Since uh, one of the major features of our work in uh, workshops of culture is a feature is a is is something that we practice from the very beginning, the cultivate from the very beginning, that is collaborative or cooperative work. Anything we do and everything we do is thanks to cooperation, thanks to a specific and a wonderful team of collaborators, managers of culture, artists, and all the collaborators. Thank you very much. That would be more or less uh, okay. Uh, today we will add more about the publishing activity, and we'll also give some insight into the material that you will be able to learn more about other authors uh, uh, and uh, books and uh, publications of our publishing house. I believe that one of major ideas. Uh, that uh, Lublin Warsztaty uh, Kultury pursue is uh, cross-border cooperation. And uh, the, the objective of, of these meetings, of meetings like this, is to show uh, a panorama of actions taken by a vast array of institutions that deal with culture and that promote cultural issues. We Yesterday, we <coughs> broadcast uh, 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 a stream from the um, uh, Center of Culture, and tomorrow you will be also able to uh, to, to get some. And today uh, we are going to watch a film material uh, uh, produced by Hanna Linkowska, uh, and the voice of uh, authors and creators. So uh, please feel invited to watch this material, and we'll be back to our guest in Belarus. Mm. Literary Lublin, Eastern Express. This is where our activity, with the activity of the uh, major group uh, in the literary history of uh, Lublin started. This was a group re reflector. Uh, it was a mixture of a French avant-garde, a literary avant-garde, and the ideas that came from uh, uh, Russian uh, territories. Uh, yes and ends and uh, 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 prose, uh, Russian prose. And it was a mixture that it's very difficult to find in Polish literature of the uh, 19th century. Perhaps the most well known representative of this poetic uh, trend uh, that was called uh, the second avant garde was Józef Czechowicz. Yav uh, Yavorsky had this idea of what should be emphasized in the literary debate, and the Polish culture sometimes keeps ignoring uh, certain Eastern trends. Wobodowski insisted on serious debate, on listening of our friends from Eastern part of Europe. 
The border is not a problem to us. Uh, Michał Karabuda, director of uh, uh, Department of Culture. For 16 years, particularly Poland, uh, when it became member of uh, EU, the border uh, be be became a problem because being a border of European Union. But thanks to building uh, wonderful relations between artists, animators of culture and partners in Eastern Europe, these borders are no longer a problem, uh, they are not a border that cannot be surpassed. Uh, from 2014, uh, workshops of culture, Warsztaty Kultury, are running a cycle called uh, Wschodni Express, Eastern Express. The idea is to organize meetings and debates with uh, writers and intellectuals of, uh, uh, of uh, Eastern countries, Eastern Polish neighbors. An important element is publishing a house or publishing initiative, Wschodni Express, Eastern Express, where we publish the most interesting literary positions from East European countries, mostly essays, uh, uh, fine uh, 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 essays, uh, literature, prose, and poetry. There is a there is a custom in uh, that uh, in train there are also, uh, only uh, uh, resting places, sleeping uh, uh, cars. And uh, I met a woman from Lviv and uh, another woman who was a cleaner in Greece, and they were and they just start started talking and I think what I liked is is the way they talked the, the way she she, uh, she was waving the story and I'm collecting such stories and I'm trying to and I decided to write a book about people traveling from uh, between Poland and Ukraine and after after years it was published and came back to Poland in literary works it's easier because the author has certain choice uh, Whereas, as, as a translator, you have no such choice of a strategy of, of writing. You have to, um, you, you have to follow certain uh, regime, and you have to use certain uh, academic level of a, uh, of a translation. And uh, Eastern Express is a metaphor, is a translational metaphor. Uh, a metaphor that is part of or represents many initiatives, translation initiatives taken in Europe for a number of decades. Uh, it, it started in uh, an initiative uh, at the beginning of 2000 when uh, writers were uh, traveling uh, from Russia to Portugal and back to Berlin. And it has reference to a uh, metaphor as translation uh, translation uh, metaphor by Schleiermacher that you either drag the uh, 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 reader to the country of the author or the other way around. So we bring the texts to publish readers. The majority of texts are translated by wonderful translators, and this is crucial because uh, they also are important for literatures of their countries. They were recognized uh, and they realized published context quite well. All the authors from Belarus, Ukraine, Latvia, with whom we connected this year, speak published very well. It's rather difficult to find published authors with such a good, with, with a literary uh, uh, super league that would be able to talk uh, uh, in, in any of the neighbor languages and to talk with uh, the uh, readers in these countries. So you see, uh, published literature, published culture plays a huge role in those countries, in the literary context, literary policy systems. And this is why getting to know, I mean, familiarizing Polish writers with these literatures is, of, is in a way, paying back or paying certain credit or restoring kind of historical 
historical justice and uh, historical balance. Sergei Prychutsky's uh, book, a um, renowned Belarusian uh, poet who lives in Kiev in, in Ukraine, and is very, very telling in the context of uh, Belarusian events. It's a particular comment of what has been going on in the uh, last 25 years in Belarus. Uh, in Belarus, uh, the situation that uh, people protested against uh, uh, Lukashenko and the methods used by the power, Lukashenko power, in uh, uh, over the years. Lukashenko is hysterical. Uh, he uh, uses his hitmen against people, but history shows that uh, uh, the power uh, based on uh, uh, aggressiveness will be destroyed. Fighting against people, about families, about students, uh, and forcing people to find new jobs, uh, you know, usually being uh, uh, losing their status. So I believe and I really hope that those protesters will win and that Lukashenko will get to prison and Belarus will be free. So let live Belarus. The zero point uh, is uh, something taken from psychology. When you are in a zero point, this is this moment when you leave everything, when you are departed from everything. Uh, things that grew over time, uh, those all those psychological loads, like um, you need to, you know, like uh, reset yourself, start from scratch. Uh, something that I really experience. There's nothing in the world. It's me. It's the moment of now, here and now. Marketeer is a book on my of uh, about my student life, where I was 17, 18, or 20. It was something like 20 years ago. These were 1990s in Crimea, in the in Ukraine, in my native land. And it's a book about my student life, which I find really interesting, very joyful in my life, of me and my friends. Writing about these li Lithuanian pictures, I was thinking of writing, of addressing young uh, Lithuanian generation so that they understand certain things. Because young generation of Lithuanian, and I think, uh, thank God, they don't understand certain Soviet context, they don't understand certain past context. So I thought about Polish uh, authors, Polish audience. I think it may be interesting for Polish audiences some, some, you know, some uh, uh, personal uh, universalisms or universal people like the Napoleon, um, uh, Hannibal Lecter, uh, Gorbachev, and other people. It's a mysterious name. It's a little bit, even in modern Ukrainian or contemporary Ukrainian, there is no such thing. So we needed to reach to dialectal uh, solution, some words that we used a uh, long time ago. Vorokta comes from a verb vorochtita. It may be something like uh, sources, uh, uh, fountains, uh, and this is, you know, the way people speak. It's like blah, blah, blah. And also to a talk uh, of, uh, of some uh, magicians, of some uh, uh, people in the know. Uh, and some sorcerers who communicate in a particular uh, mysterious language. Uh, it's not even a dialect. It's a, um, it's a secretive uh, speech of symbolic codes. And because normal people, common people, should not understand the non-common, the super ordinary ones, they uh, they invented vorohti as a verb to to uh, to say as mumbo jumbo or kind of uh, difficult speech. 
it's just one uh, possible way of interpreting and maybe in Polish it's a little bit going to uh, it's going to be a little bit more complex to interpret in Polish but but what we have is a kind of vorochtarium, a way of talking about in a particular way uh, mm, an analogy to uh, to bestarium or aquarium I was interested first in the uh, uh, creation process in how things are created in literature and the masters such as uh, the idea was that uh, Oris asks us uh, um, and we answer so a kind of interview so we we stayed and we uh, uh, Oris gave us topics and we are not always ready to, we do not have the topics to talk about and we have to, you know, like an agenda to follow. It's just like an idea that he threw, that he th that he came up with, and then someone could have some similar structure. So, you know, the only structure is three days that we had to fill in with material, with content, and the number of questions that could go in any possible direction. So whenever I talk about literature, you talk in a positive way. You know, about Borowski, about Chłasko, uh, Myślivski, and other authors. I'm not sure I'm right when I talk about certain lines, you know, uh, in, in published thinking about Ukraine, certain particular directions like uh, Dmowski or Giedroyc. I'm not sure how it's going to be received in Poland. As far as I'm concerned, I believe this is more or less the way I presented. And, uh, and what I presented, I leave it to the readers. I believe that uh, Russian-speaking uh, writers in, in Ukraine is not Ukrainian literature. I think it's U Russian literature in Ukraine. Yeah, okay. It may be that in national nation states or national states, whereas uh, Yuri says that when a writer considers himself Ukrainian, he is Ukrainian uh, by identity, even if he writes in Russian. As Yuri solidarizes with a person, not. And uh, I'm, I, solid, uh, I keep in touch with science, with research, and I think we need better arguments than you consider yourself to be uh, a, a Ukrainian. Someone may consider a genius, but is he? I try to avoid this information uh, overload. I'm trying to give voice to authors and a voice that is addressed to me. Basically, I think that I am I'm more of a translator from the language of literature to, uh, uh, to radio. Żonglerów, akrobatów, kobiety z brodą wyprasowywano w nadziei, że wysusza ich chciwe ciała. Ale cyrkowcy nie chcieli ginąć. Rośli i przybierali na sile pod kocem stronic na kaloriach liter w namiocie mojego ciała. I kiedy dostali to wszystko, czego chcieli i co musieli, cyrkowcy mnie ukradli. Cyrkowcy mnie zjedli. Cyrkowcy otworzyli we mnie swój wędrowny cyrk. When I started to translate, when I first attempted to translate poems into Ukrainian, it was a great challenge. I was uh, really scared with that process. I felt really discouraged and I, I had a lot for myself. I, I benefited for myself in the first place with that process. And later on, I started to publish my translations. 
I always uh, tried to select a number of pieces, 10 to 12 uh, pieces, to publish in journals, uh, uh, magazines. There are fewer and fewer of them, by the way, which, uh, which is sorry to say. Later on, I tried to translate more serious uh, stuff. But as regards um, uh, fiction, Besides, uh, besides fiction, I started to translate articles in political science uh, or, or short pieces, and I, us I usually had a very short deadline, so I had to work with a big number of texts within a limited time. I remember that rhythm of, of the work, uh, that rhythm that I fell into, uh, that I got engrossed with, uh, helped me just forget about my fears, about my anxieties, and I think after that experience I became a fully fledged translator, somebody who actually translates, not only thinks about translating. Well, I started to really treat translators with greater and greater respect because this is what they do they give blood they give away their intellectual energy and not always uh, uh, do we appreciate them but i am very much indebted to to translators well as it is in the bible in the story of the tower of babel when god punished people by twisting their tongues uh, a translator is a bit like uh, like a creator, uh, someone who whose objective is to uh, bring people together, connect people, uh, transfer what was said in a foreign, in a strange language, uh, and put it into their own language. So a translator will explore the sacrum, the area uh, where he or she discovers symbols. Well, this is what literature does. It helps people communicate. Without translators, national literatures would remain uh, closed, airtight, uh, sealed, isolated systems. So through translations, uh, authors exchange their, their creative work um, and uh, universal literature uh, has become a, a universal or global phenomenon and not just a selection of isolated national, national literatures. Andrea Adamowicz, uh, volume of uh, Day of Poems, Day of Death. What interests my son the most, it's a quote, is milk. And my wife keeps saying, write a poem about Michał. Today, she put him on my chest. And I had a very strange dream. I mean, me and my son. First, it was really terrifying. And later on, Michael separated the milk from the very essence of it. Later on, we went to a store to pay for the milk, and we made the milk to get collected. We pr prayed to the milk, and we, sw and we swore to the milk." End of quote. So what is a good translation about? Well, there is an old saying that it's either faithful, either loyal, or beautiful. I think these two doesn't need to go separately, uh, although ideal translation, something that will be really, really universal, uh, this is something uh, unreachable. When there was, uh, if there was just a single language in the world, or everybody knew all foreign languages, then everybody could read uh, literature in all possible languages, so translations wouldn't be necessary. I think the, the most important part of translation is how to get motivated. Uh, authors often feel that uh, what means something in their own country doesn't need to mean the same in another country and sometimes uh, it helps identify who the author is uh, also abroad, also away. If we understood reading as, a, as an entertainment, then the role of quality of translation would be reduced to 
pleasure that it produces during reading. However, people, I, I strongly believe in it, read to learn something, and a good translation offers knowledge, and its value wouldn't depend on whether we regard this uh, knowledge as useful or, or whether we like it. Uh, Sabchuk has uh, an experience in the uh, uh, Russian-Afghan war, and what I liked the most was his uh, storytelling, because it's, 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 it's a tragedy, and in his quick and, and concise form, he says, I went to buy ice cream for my schoolmate. I returned without a leg and with shaky hands. Uh, uh, Afghanistan is a really hot place. Well, we try to prove everyone that we speak the same language, that we speak the same language of values. Good evening again. Welcome back to uh, uh, Studio East Express. We connect with uh, uh, Julian Olhert. Good evening. Can you hear us? Good evening. Yes, we can hear you well. It's very good to see you. And the box were mentioned in the film material that we've been through. So I hope you, you have seen your work. So now we are going to talk about the situation in Belarus. Uh, we have Professor uh, Hubert Waszkiewicz representing uh, University of Warsaw and Tomasz Stępniewski uh, 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 connected with the uh, Catholic University of Lublin. And uh, I know that you are engaged in uh, protests in Belarus. And, uh, over a month of protests uh, in Belarus. Uh, can you tell us about the latest uh, cases, cases of arrest, of imprisonment, uh, 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 people whom you know, and uh, 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 some uh, Ihor Baranowski uh, was arrested yesterday. So uh, a, a group of uh, a group of dissidents, group of uh, uh, opposi opposition members, seem to be uh, uh, decreasing. So what's your perspective on that? First of all, let us thank for uh, being invited to the uh, to our uh, to the Congress. We can see a lot of a lot of uh, budgets with our flag, it's really crucial for us, it's really moving and touching. As for uh, arrests on imprisonments, yes, the number of gr is growing from the very beginning of uh, Lukashenko's election, presidential election, over 13,000 people were detained, some of them were released, uh, others were arrested and still uh, processes are going on. Pros uh, uh, legal actions in some cases these are administrative in others this is penal uh, legal actions and uh, people talk that there is something like 300 uh, uh, penal cases against people uh, we were surprised to find out that uh, Belarusian philosopher and her husband Alexander uh, Damians were detained after Sunday protest so I want to say, I, uh, you know, we, we may also be subject to administrative liability and responsibility because we are now talking to you, but because we are, and we admit to have been to these protests. So we learned from the internet that uh, Olha and her husband were detained 
just when we are reconnected to the internet because on Sunday when we left to the street mobile internet was not available it disappears so yesterday uh, it's attacks against uh, against uh, environmentalists uh, are uh, taken and a number of representatives were uh, detained in the street Today, uh, the process was to take place, but but it's still uh, postponed to some later stage. She was accused of taking part in Minsk uh, protests, but she was always she was only uh, in uh, Brest. Um, but a, a lot of uh, people are also detained, uh, are also released from prisons. Uh, still, we do not know whether this is the end because um, uh, the final uh, uh, statements or final uh, sentences are still to be awaited, and we do not know what kind of fine is going to be um, th th they are likely to face. Let me add that over the last 15 days, Lena Lochenko is stay is kept in prison and uh, who is well f uh, she is famous sportswoman a lot of our colleagues were detained and spent a number of days in prison others were fined uh, to feel the emotion that uh, that in, in Belarusian uh, society we saw your poems that you spoke uh, it's seen in your poems and it's seen in your uh, protests and there's a huge resonance huge uh, impact social impact and we are really afraid of what's going on there and we are really anxious about your your situation you are in uh, we realize how strong propaganda is uh, is now going on and when the internet is not there how can you manage how, how can you organize yourself as uh, and uh, those marches or protests of uh, uh, pensioners so what's the um, what's the attitude of older generations who do not who cannot uh, who are not subject to propaganda um, and but they also do not get uh, uh, new messages that are available on the internet so how do you manage in this situation in these circumstances yeah it's true a couple of days ago on Monday there was a protest of pensioners you can hard it's hard to imagine in the civic society that Old people, elderly, uh, who were usually con who were usually considered as supporters of uh, of the regime. So in a way, so in a way, Lukashenko's regime is surprised or taken by surprise or shocked by this protest. I believe that pensioners, older generations, a social group during later times, truly saw a need for change and they saw the situation in Belarus older generation you, you can truly uh, find um, it difficult to find uh, 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 pensioners who would support uh, uh, Lukashenko uh, they are really really advanced in newest technologies uh, state-of-the-art technologies and the and the internet and the, uh, uh, the platforms, uh, internet platforms, attracts all generations of uh, Belarusians, also uh, uh, older, uh, 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 older generations. So Telegram is used as a messenger uh, or um, messaging uh, application on telephones, uh, and we also uh, we also. Uh, downloaded and we are using uh, uh, telegram so we are in touch we are all in touch and we are in touch uh, we are in access to quality information independent non propaganda information i strongly believe that those who would like this information are capable of getting it propaganda nobody is satisfied with propaganda i would say 
Even those who believe in Lukashenko are not really happy with the quality of propaganda. They are uh, well uh, familiarized with uh, uh, opposition uh, telegram channels and others. They really want to know what's going on. So whenever we leave in Sunday and, and uh, walk around Minsk, we are not walking uh, in central city streets, but we are moving in about uh, dwelling districts. Uh, so one of the motto is uh, just switch off your TV and look beyond the window, look behind the window. A lot of women, older generation uh, women, uh, wave to us from behind the, uh, the window panes. They show the flag, so the majority are, react in a very positive way. Yeah, okay, there are exceptions. Some people may happen to flow some water on us. So during one of the uh, media pieces, we saw uh, we saw you, uh, Olgit, saying you're proud with your city of Minsk. Um, so what do you think? Uh, what else do you think has changed in the Belarusian society? Well, I have always said I love and hate Minsk. I love it because it's my hometown. I know it like the back of my hand. I, I feel, uh, I sense this city. I know its history, but I hate it because Minsk was uh, uh, or has been the capital of a non-democratic state, a city without beauty. Uh, uh, beauty was forced uh, to stay away. I mean, you couldn't breathe in this city. It was sub subjugated to very strict rules. So Minsk um, hasn't been a city conducive to creative work, although it has many, many talented citizens. And for the last two months, Minsk has changed into something that uh, you can really talk to, that you can see is opening up. This uh, uh, living creative force in Minsk has been uh, unlocked, has uh, shown its full potential, its freedom, the freedom of thought, the freedom of action. And contemporary, or today's Minsk, is uh, is a place where you can where you can see uh, identity shared by all people. Previously, Minsk was seen like like a center, like a hub surrounded by peripheries. And today, in new and old districts, there are uh, local initiatives, communities getting together, people who just go out in the evening go out into backyards, into streets, they talk to each other, they invite artists, they draw, they sing, they, they make their own flags or banners. This is uh, something that is really happening on the daily basis. Uh, many people make their own uh, banner based on the traditional Belarusian banner. They even create, they design logos of individual districts. And this is not, this is even going beyond uh, the traditional administrative division. Uh, these divisions actually overlap with historical boundaries of um, different boroughs of Minsk uh, because people stop seeing administrative division as something really uh, still really effective, really valid. People learn about places where they need. They start really taking ownership of their own city. As Yulia put it, uh, there is this catchphrase very popular recently this is our city and we can hear people repeating this is our city this is our city and uh, really really uh, are, are close to tears and we know this is sincere we know this is really coming from inside the, the, the heart and this is not only true about Minsk previously most protests started 
and uh, were most visible in the capital. But we can see that smaller cities, regional capitals, there is also some uh, uh, something going on, people write constitutions of their own localities, of their own places, what you can do, what you cannot do, uh, you know, some rules about violence, about uh, friendly uh, living, and this is, you know, very peaceful and at the same time revolutionary. I think uh, national identity is waking up, but also local identities are waking up because this um, helps people get together. And also the new media are very, very helpful. People uh, use uh, the Telegram app to initiate uh, chats, to uh, transmit messages, to, to get together. Well, Let's stop for a moment uh, at this point. Uh, perhaps we can have uh, now Hubert Waszkiewicz to talk about uh, also our Polish perspective on what she's saying. But because so many people are watching you at this moment uh, from Poland and abroad, we would be very uh, we would appreciate if you just told us uh, frankly what kind of support you need from us. Well, in the first place, uh, we need information to be spread. We need you to tell uh, your officials, European officials, your societies what is going on here. Because before elections, Belarus, Belarus was labeled uh, the last dictatorship of Europe. And I know in American media, when they started to talk about uh, Belarus after elections, they, th it was the first time they really started to put Belarus on the map of Europe, telling this is here between Poland and, and Russia. So today, Belarus has really gained its face, its character. And this is what, what you need to tell everyone. Well, in my opinion, we need political support. I don't know whether this is really up to you, uh, I mean, participants of the Congress to affect, uh, to, sorry, to, to influence your Polish or, or European policy in this respect. That is why I think a strong pressure of the European Union on the regime uh, might, might work. We, we have the, the feeling that this pressure is not enough. It is only declarative, only some, some judgments are, are, are made, only some opinions are voiced, which is not enough. This is, this is fine, but I think that our regime doesn't take uh, all these words seriously. I think I, I, in the first place, we need to thank Poland because this is uh, one of the neighbors that is very, very supportive uh, throughout these days. We are very grateful. We can feel it, we can see it, and it's not true about other European countries. Uh, Poland is really among the very, very few neighbors which is so helpful. Well, I think. Uh, perhaps there are people watching us uh, who are well uh, circumstanced, well connected, they have uh, uh, networks, friends, so they will spread this news, spread this message and, and tell everyone about this, this dimension that you, that you covered. Before we move on to talking about politics, I, um, uh, and before, before our guests take the floor, I'd like to ask uh, Professor Waszkiewicz about identity. Uh, this, this is um, a very strange revolution, uh, like a velvet revolution, the revolution with a female face, some say. So what kind of uh, identity transformation is behind it? 
this Homo Sovieticus mask is is uh, is falling away, is falling off. So what do we see? What is coming out of it? Well, I'm not sure is if if um, the idea of Homo Sovieticus still works. Is it is it does it really apply to Belarus? Certainly. What is a great opportunity at this moment is not only what mask is falling off, but what what knowledge uh, we draw from uh, what is happening. Because we tend to discover through art, literature and film. Belarus is a strange country because it has a very specific, very concrete film and other works of art that are actually very seldom, uh, very rarely associated with Belarus. I know um, Belarusian uh, directors, artists who live and cr create in Belarus, but they are not known as Belarusians. So whether this is going to be a velvet revolution like in the Czech Republic or spring revolution like in Arab countries or whether whether tulip or orange is it's irrelevant. I think the most important thing at this moment is that Belarus is discovering its diversity and of course there are certain contradictions also coming up. Uh, one thing that is uh, really transient, I think, uh, for the last 26 years, it has been conserved. Uh, we remember the, the, the period of uh, Belarusianization in the 1920s. Uh, I mean, all these uh, rural images, uh, all these uh, folk pictures, or Minsk as the palace for the people, as the most beautiful Rococo city of the Soviet Union. And that picture, that image, really overshadowed attempts to discover Belarus and its artistic potential and creation because we couldn't really confront it with what was happening in the world, regardless of whether this is Poland, Russia, or Australia, or New Guinea. So this is a great opportunity now to make Belarusian colors, whether this is white, red, and white, um, I'm sure this will be no more uh, red, green, and white. With, with some uh, local or folk symbols mm, that are beautiful, but they no longer apply to what Belarusian society is today because it is no more a village, it is no more a folk uh, tradition behind it. And in the history of Minsk, I wouldn't um, fully agree that people start rediscovering old districts, old divisions, old boundaries. I think in uh, this mm, uh, Minsk of uh, two million of population, I think people will start fighting uh, if they start discovering their, their past, because this is a story of Minsk I know. And I think uh, another thing, uh, do we still have time? Thank you. So this is a great chance to rediscover, redefine, to keep searching also for the linguistic expression of what is Belarusia. In the former times, it was linked to the Belarusian language, literary language, with uh, less mm, uh, favor uh, to uh, dialects, to local languages where these local uh, dialects uh, resemble uh, a Polish or Ukrainian or Russian, it's, it's different. I think uh, the mass nature of these pro pro protests will really uncover this multilinguistic nature of Belarusian. I know that some colleagues of mine, some people say, either this will be Belarusian or no other language. On the other hand, 
I tend to think that in this reality, for example, of Minsk, why not uh, copy uh, the, the idea of Dublin, where they speak English, although they are not the English people, they feel Irish. So I think, uh, I know you are brave and you are very eager to also uh, f carry on with this linguistic uh, struggle, uh, but don't, don't take offense uh, if you uh, don't take offense if, if you don't like my, my opinion. I know this is very, a very gentle thing to talk about, very sensitive, and in the long run, uh, this this probably may be may be a bit straightened out, and because there are so many traditions to be reconciled. Uh, so let me uh, conclude uh, by sharing some some economic remarks. With so many contrasts in Belarus, Belarus used to be a very modern country in the Soviet Union. It, the, the standard of living was much higher than the average of, of the Soviet Union. And perhaps even now, uh, we will be able to discover another face of Belarus, a Belarus which is relatively technologically advanced, with, of course, many contrasts within the country, but um, being aware that Minsk is a big city, it's, it's a clean city with a beautiful underground. And I think maybe still there are places in Belarus, in villages or towns that are very poetic, but at the same time uh, they lose population. Um, perhaps Belarus will come to think through uh, certain social uh, uh, or public um, f mindset. Uh, most people live in the countryside, but the question now is, do we build a country which is only uh, filled with uh, forests, beavers, and uh, vegetable fields, and everybody moves to Minsk? I don't think this is the way. Um, well. I'm sorry if I'm too straightforward, but uh, we are friends, so friends should be frank, really, with each other. Is this the Gedemins Tower behind you on the wall? It's, it's, it's Minsk. It's a photograph in a space of Minsk. It's okay. I just was trying to guess whether answer what are for photographs. So, uh, it's not from Soviet time, but it's it's old building. Thank you very much. Would you like to uh, address to, or would you like to react to the to what Professor Washkevich said? If we understood correctly, I believe that I'll start with the uh, with the end of. Uh, of the story, one fifth of uh, uh, dwellers of, of Belarus, of, of um, popu uh, Belarusian pop population lives in Minsk, but it's not true that the whole life, Belarusian life, and uh, Bel Belarusian drive is towards Minsk. What we can see is a reverse trend of moving beyond Minsk, and what we get is what other, what we are getting is what other our neighbors had. So young people, young creators are leaving uh, uh, Minsk to move uh, to move to uh, forlorn uh, villages and creating uh, cultural centers, um, the, and people 
people in a way record they live in a wonderful uh, country that does not start and end in Minsk so as far as beavers are concerned and uh, and I'm very very thankful to Professor Waszkiewicz that she uh, remembered the, uh, the, the one of the crucial notions, crucial problems in Belarusian culture. One something I mentioned this this element of a flag and the embroidery on the flag. It's true that in 20 years, a new culture has been developing in Belarus and has a lot of contacts with the West, with the world. And you can say is oriented towards the Western culture. And it is also true that you cannot hide it, you cannot it, uh, you cannot uh, you can put a mask of uh, embroidery uh, and say it's not there. This is what we have done over the last what we have done over the last decade. We've been trying to show to our Western colleagues and Western consumers of art, if I may say, is that Belarus has a very has very strong uh, interesting uh, names in art, in uh, in literature, in performance. That we are we are exactly the same as you. We think the same categories as you. We have common values, and what makes us together, which puts us together, is the wish. Uh, to breathe something new, to create something new. And the remnants, uh, the ruins that we are surrounded by the uh, official or officialese culture of Belarus, nobody cares about that, neither in the West or here. It only exists because it's supported by state donations or state financial support. So one history is is uh, a story basically of a of a national theater in Minsk, a Jan, Jan Kupa, which was destroyed by the state. Basically, uh, all the uh, all the group resigned from the theater because they. Um, wanted to show their solidarity with the director. This was a very strong gesture of solidarity with protesters in the street, that this very strong official institution, it was a state institution that existed uh, because it was paid uh, by the, because paid for by the state, by the regime. So that was a symbolic move, that a structure that seemed so dependent on the regime seized or rejected its being as state. It was like a catharsis from uh, the state level dependence. So that move uh, was definitely a winning move for the theater and uh, winning and, and positing itself for the good side of history. So the world uh, wanted to, decided to, to, uh, to discern that and our revolution expressed itself. This way or another, uh, we have a, the song that is uh, repeated uh, during the protests became a very important uh, song. Uh, uh, I would like to comment on uh, conflicts of districts. It was the case, but now the protest situation changed all that. They exchange some ideas, some, uh, 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 they uh, share food. They uh, live in solidarity, and uh, yeah, it's strange, but it really, it really changed. The Minsk was not that peaceful uh, as as it is now. It was kind of belligerent, and uh, uh, there were conflicts. So there were not enough. Con there were not. Um, there was uh, there, there was a conflict, and uh, there was a strife in the city. Uh, I would like to say that one of the most interesting uh, architectural construction of Minsk, for me, is the previous former uh, former seat of political police. You can see all architectural orders, all architectural designs and styles from Greek, the redesigns from uh, Roman styles. It's whenever I uh, walked by, I thought how to use this mixture, how to use this uh, 
This, uh, this mixture about the changing politics, very, uh, very clever, but very vicious. That was to subjugate the members, the uh, citizens of uh, one of the important republics of Slav countries. And how to see the countries, uh, how to see the contrast between this building and Lubyanka, Moscovite Lubyanka. So to start from the oldest, uh, from the latest, uh, the most dramatic history, to move towards something new, something else. Because this building uh, shows a very, very clear contact with the West. Uh, Union capitals, Union heads, uh, and uh, wonderful, he uh, wonderful heads of uh, uh, Dory style. So it's a very, very interesting eclectic uh, model. I think something that you mentioned: uh, high level of art, high level of culture, high level of uh, architecture, also IT that is very state of the art. And now, where are we going? So, uh, let's ask our analysts. Let's uh, ask our specialists about future scenarios for Belarus. When we look at the broader perspective, uh, Belarus as one of the elements of the post-Soviet area, we can see that Belarus is going through this stage of reawakening. We use, maybe it's not a revolution, but certainly it's the first stage, initial stage, on a longer term change of situation in Belarus. Thinking about potential scenarios of a mid-term perspective, the awakening of the Belarusian society will certainly add to some mid-term perspective to the demise of uh, Lukashenko's uh, regime. But when we think about this change in a very short-term perspective, like a couple of days, weeks, now I would say everything depends on how much the representatives of the regime will move towards the society, move to the positions of society. I'm not talking about opposition, I mean society. So if the power structures of the regime uh, are transferred, move uh, towards Towards the, uh, across the border to, towards the society, the regime is doomed. But we have to realize that uh, additional player on the uh, Belarusian scene is Russia. So as long as uh, Lukashenko is supported by Putin's regime, a lot depends on, on the internal clashes and crashes within the power system in Belarus. As long as we can't see the, the, these crises or clashes, we can see that the process is very slow and Belarus is uh, is, uh, in, mm, is uh, in a way integrated to the post-Russian uh, area. Uh, Russians are very skillful in creating that area, and we can see they are going to implement the co co cooperation uh, and uh, all agreements. And if the society chooses a pro-Western tendencies, developmental tendencies, uh, still Belarus will stay economically connected with, with the Russian Federation, and those bilateral agreements will be very difficult to, uh, to withdraw from. So the longer that Lukashenko stays, Belarus will be more dependent on Russian economic area, Russian economic influences. For Lukashenko, what is most important is keeping in power, yet uh, it's less important how much he's going to pay for the sovereignty of Belarus, because he's interested in his power. And this is dramatic from the perspective of uh, Belarusian society. Because the cost of keeping Belarusian regime, all kind of costs, including the exchange of Lukashenko for some other leader still supported by the Russians, 
But the whole and, and, and then the problem of a, of a takeover of the whole capital of the whole production capital by the Russian business. As as we analyze Eastern uh, politics in Belarus, some texts try to show analogies uh, uh, with uh, Ukraine 2014. Can you see differences? Can you see distinctive points? One dif distinct or point of distinctiveness is vectors of uh, international politics. In 2013-14, lack of uh, uh, agreement with uh, European Union, accession agreement or, or affiliation agreement, uh, obviously uh, the society uh, moved against Yanukovych. Because they were, they wanted a pro-Western, pro-EU policy of Kiev. Now, when we have a look at Minsk, we don't have a choice. We, we, the society doesn't doesn't have a choice or doesn't opt for any vector. Belarusians want to go to the West, and the situation of the society and human rights, and human right protection, and also being tired uh, by the by Lukashenko's regime. So we have a different situation. Belarusian society does not want to connect or integrate with the European Union, as was as was the Ukrainian case. And the protest uh, show it, as uh, uh, Professor Washkevich mentioned, or flags, uh, white and uh, white and red, or red and white. Uh, but we can't see any flags of the European Union, so that's a huge difference. And I don't want to say that Belarusians do not think about being connected with Europe, Western societies. That's not my point. The point is, it's not as clear and it's not as emphasized as in the Ukrainian case. We have to keep in mind that we cannot truly analyze the situation out of the context. Economically, Belarus is far more dependent on Russian resources and keeping the regime, uh, Lukashenko's regime, depends on the flow of resources coming from the Russian Federation plus prices for getting them. So when economic exchange between Belarus and Russia uh, swamps uh, uh, go, goes towards a slump, it will definitely uh, affect the uh, economic situation uh, in uh, Belarus. One more issue, uh, change in a situation in Ukraine after 2014 was not the best example, or best practice as you could say. In fact, the uh, living uh, conditions in Ukraine worsened. Ukraine lost Crimea, uh, the conflict in Donbas region uh, that has a death toll of 11,000 is could be an anti-example for other countries of a model of, of a development of political uh, situation. So we have to keep in mind. But she also mentioned that European countries, how do they react to the situation in Belarus? As was the EU reaction to Belarusian situation, even on on the example of a uh, Visegrad meeting in a uh, uh, Visegrad group meeting in Lublin, we could see there is a missing consensus to send a signal from European U Union because some countries within the Visegrad group truly are ready to support uh, uh, Ms. Cichanowska are more supportive towards the status quo than the radical change of the situation. European Union seems to play safe and keep a distance with Final decisions. Merkel, Putin, and other representatives of the of uh, European Union talk, and a scenario is talking about Belarus with Putin beyond or without participation of Belarus. 
Within European Union, business representatives, particularly German business, pushes very strongly that the policy, that the German policy will not become victim of the situation in Belarus. Because when you put sanctions, when you try to block cooperation with Eastern countries, basically what he means is Russian, also Belarus, this will, this will influence, this will impact negatively economic exchange and economic outcome. We have a dilemma, uh, values versus, uh, versus business values or uh, profits. Uh, we should care about human rights. Uh, there's a lot of communication about human rights and uh, human rights support. You can also uh, uh, hear it from uh, many representatives of the European Union. Still, uh, business perspective is different. It's a hardline business. and. Uh, Macron is one of uh, of those who would like to kind of reset, re redesign of a relation with uh, uh, with uh, Belarus and Russia. However, Macron seems to take a position that uh, loosening cooperation or worsening cooperation with Russia and with uh, Belarus that would influence uh, policies and political status and economic status of some European countries. So. There is no coherent position of the European Union. Yes, of course, there is. A, there are political statements against Lukashenko, his uh, elections, and his being a president. And the sanctions are, in a way, um, somehow a calculated risk or a calculated scenario, because basically they support uh, Lukashenko in his staying and his regime in continuation. Uh, we have 15 minutes, and uh, mm, uh, participants of uh, participants can can take part, can, can ask questions if they log in. Uh, 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 Professor Washkevich, uh, would you like to address the issue? Yeah, I would be optimistic. Uh, Professor Stempniewski mentioned about politics as is, as it looks in two, three years. So a mid-term perspective. From the perspective of my experience and and uh, uh, and uh, and if I remember different periods in Poland, different perspectives in Poland, and in a year or two they never came true. It took many years. It took decades for certain plans to uh, to come true. And if I may pass any kind of wishes to all people of goodwill and uh, of bad will, so that they change into people of goodwill. And my wishes are as follows. Whatever the reality, whatever the, um, the uh, iron, iron, uh, iron uh, grasp of, uh, or grab of uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich may be dangerous for the time being, in a long-term perspective it may change. In Helsinki, long, long time ago, politicians Politicians decided that what in human what the human rights, even though they are not uh, they are not uh, profitable or they are difficult to accept in in short term perspective, but they realize that in a long term perspective they are really important. So what you are going through now in Belarus, like fines, arrests, and so on, but. In a short-term perspective, you will not find a success on on that uh, on, on on the short run, but in the long run, the success is possible on this human perspective, and it's going to be difficult. Waiting is difficult, but acting and waiting, you can reach something. You can get somewhere. Also, I keep thinking in the world because of. Uh, Love of Russian hunters and Russia uh, and um, Chinese hunters was expected uh, 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 a tiger, Ugarian tiger, uh, was expected almost to disappear. But one 
Uzurian uh, tiger uh, survived despite those uh, uh, those those efforts. It was it was Putin. To take Volant's perspective, to say to take Goethe's uh, Faustian perspective, in the long run, even the most malicious powers uh, may turn out to the good in the future. So I strongly uh, support uh, and I strongly wish you the best in the. Buhakov's uh, words and Buhakov's intentions. We check whether there are topics and questions on the chat. We have a minute that you can use to address the um, voices in our studio in Lublin. For me, I, there is no reason to debate with whatever you said in, in, in the studio. All I would like to add is that uh, Ju Julia, Julia and I as active participants of uh, those protests, of those events in Minsk, that we, we are part of it, we can see that last three months in these last three months, we witness a huge change, a transformation in uh, political thinking of society to Russian regime, their attitudes to Russian regime, to Lukashenko's regime. Before the election, there, there was a number of Belarusian people who saw Russia as big brother and who believed Russian propaganda, uh, Lukashenko's propaganda, and was a majority of uh, Belarusian society. What we can see now is a huge change, is a huge disappointment of Russia and of Putin. We were never full supporters of Putin. We had no illusions about Russian uh, authoritarian power, but I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about people in the street, common people, and uh, they saw Putin as strong leader. Uh, as, and over those two months, people saw something that they got disappointed with Putin and. Not too many people have any hope with Russia and position of Russia. It's hard to determine whether those integrative processes are going or integration processes are going on and how is it going to be how are we going to engage people or economy to cooperate with people as uh, to, with Russia as partners because people do not believe any longer in Russian propaganda they don't see Russia they don't see this uh, more adult brother in Russia a kind of older brother stronger brother it's true that we don't have EU flags or pro-European uh, mottos in, uh, in, in our meetings, in our opposition protests. Uh, this is uh, one idea that needs perhaps to come back to, to public debate uh, when Lukashenko is gone. People understand and people need freedom and, uh, and uh, liberation of all the imprisoned. I believe the first thing uh, that we are fighting for is, is uh, removal of Lukashenko from, uh, from the central position in the state. And I believe uh, the presence of Lukashenko uh, is still the reason why the topic uh, that the European the European issues are not topic number one. What else? Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much for those voices, and uh, I'm happy to have heard voices of the repressed. I strongly believe that uh, the, this question, what, what do you need uh, as support?
uh, is our voice in um, in fa uh, in support of those who were uh, who were persecuted by the state and uh, find out those who are responsible. Thank you for recalling us all that. We are coming to the end of our meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much for all of you participants of the um, of the uh, of our meeting. And thanks to very much of the te technical staff and all uh, uh, our guests in the studio and you that got connected. Uh, you have time and courage to, uh, to, to make us uh, together to put us together. Uh, thank you very much for all the uh, Congress office uh, interpreters and uh, other guys, all other staff members. And we cannot show it to you because there are no technical uh, uh, ways of, of showing that. But just beyond the studio where we are, there is a number of colleagues representing city office in Lublin, and they are keeping a big Belarusian flag, seven meters times five meters. These were to be uh, final captions. Uh, we can't show you uh, in, in front of a camera because it's unknowable. We wish you all the courage you need. We wish you all the best. Uh, and we wish you that Belarus gets better support, stronger support. We are together with you. We are with you. Thank you very much for our time together. Let Belarus thrive. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. And thank you for the meeting. See you later. Exactly.